Hi guys, my name is Diana Lacalzi and I am a registered dietitian. Today I'm going to be reviewing some of the most common questions about type 2 diabetes. So can I eat carbohydrates? So yes, you can, but it's really important to focus on which type of carbohydrates. Not all carbohydrates are created equally. So you have your simple carbohydrates or refined carbohydrates, which includes things like white bread, candy, desserts, juice, milk, sugar, um, and then you have your complex carbohydrates, which are carbs that are in their whole food form. So things like fruits and vegetables, whole grains, beans and legumes, sweet potatoes, all these foods on the right are in their whole food form, meaning they're going to also have lots of fiber, lots of vitamins, lots of minerals. It's not going to be the same eating complex carbohydrates, so these whole food sources of carbs, than it is simple carbohydrates. Complex carbs are not going to affect your blood sugar like simple carbohydrates. They're actually going to help you in your journey to reverse type 2 diabetes. So the answer is yes, you can eat carbohydrates, but it's really important to focus on the type, the quality of the carbohydrate. Should I try the keto diet? So first, what is the keto diet made up of? The keto diet is high in fat and high in animal proteins, which also contain a lot of fat. So what happens is you're eating very few carbohydrates because carbs are restricted on the keto diet. So when you don't eat any carbs, of course, your glucose levels aren't going to rise. So at first, it may seem like the keto diet is working because your blood glucose levels aren't spiking. But after time, as time goes on and you eat more and more fat, fat from the animal protein and fat from the fatty sources of food, you're going to continue to build up insulin resistance. So what happens is when we eat a high fat diet, this fat starts to accumulate in our liver and in our muscles. And these are places where we don't want to have fat. Fat is meant to be in fat tissues and fat tissues only, not in our liver and not in our muscle. As this fat starts accumulating, it starts to interfere with insulin signaling. So then when insulin is released, it can't attach to the cells and it can't open up the cells to allow the glucose in. So then glucose just stays in your blood. That is why the keto diet isn't necessarily a very good idea for type 2 diabetes. Because again, in the moment, it may seem good because your glucose levels are fine. But in the long run, you're just building and building up fat, which is going to continue to cause insulin resistance, which is the underlying cause of type 2 diabetes. Remember, to reverse type 2 diabetes, we need to solve insulin resistance. And keto diet does not do that. It can maybe make the symptoms better, but it is not fixing the underlying condition. So can I eat fruit if I have diabetes? So the answer is yes, of course. But let's talk about why you may be experiencing some glucose spikes after eating a piece of fruit. Eating um, a diet that's high in animal products and added sugars and refined carbs, it leads to that excess fat in the body. So that excess fat in your muscle and in your liver cells. Again, we don't want fat there at all. And then, like I said before, this fat interferes with insulin's ability to attach to cells and allow glucose to enter. So if insulin can't attach to those cells, glucose cannot get in. So when you eat healthy carbs like fruit, glucose levels may spike because it can't get into the cells. That's why we need to fix the underlying cause, which is insulin resistance, to restore your ability to metabolize carbohydrates. So transitioning to a more plant-based diet is going to help you tackle that underlying cause. And then you'll be able to eat your healthy carbohydrates like fruit, and you'll be able to enjoy them without having to deal with glucose spikes. So should I try intermittent fasting? So it really does depend and I will explain why. So intermittent fasting is fasting for about a 16 hour period and eating within an eight hour window. The research on intermittent fasting is very promising. There are a lot of studies that show it does improve insulin sensitivity and it can help control glucose levels. It can also help with weight management. So overall, yes, it is a very effective method that can be implemented into your lifestyle. However, this is where it gets tricky. If you have type 2 diabetes and you're on glucose lowering medication, so for example, if you're on insulin or if you're on metformin, what's happening is you're lowering your glucose levels with, with these medications. 
and when you fast, you're not eating anything. So your glucose is already going to be low. So what happens is if you do fasting, plus you have these medications, it can cause your glucose levels to go too low, dangerously low. It can cause you to have hypoglycemia, which we really, really want to avoid. So if you are on glucose lowering medications, then I do not recommend it. If you want to do intermittent fasting and you are on these medications, then you should consult with your doctor. It's very, very important because again, we want to avoid hypoglycemia at all costs. So with that said, if you are not on those medications and you do want to give it a try, it's completely fine. You can. Most people start with a 16-hour fast and an eight-hour feeding window. So that would be starting your first meal at 9 a.m., ending your last meal at 5 p.m., or 10 a.m., 6 p.m., Generally, you want to start earlier and you want to end your last meal earlier. That's going to be more beneficial than doing it later. So I hope I was able to shed some light on some of the most common questions regarding type 2 diabetes. If you would like some more explanation or if you're a little confused about something, please just email us and we'll get back to you right away.